Okay, so when stringing a Stratocaster, I'd rather not flip it over and flip it back and flip it, but what I want to do is put all six strings through at the same time so that I only have to flip it over once. The trick here is making sure that you don't put the low string through the wrong hole. So highest up on the body is the low, lowest string. What we would normally call an E string, but baritone guitars are not tuned to E. They're tuned down to B. So here's normally. Actually, probably here. There's a normal guitar, baritone, lowest string would be. And in some cases, people down tune it to A. I'll, I'll figure that out later. Okay, so there's that one. What's the next color? Next color is red. Blood red. Then we got black. Then we got green. Green Monalishi with a two prong crown. You can't see, but what I'm doing is basically just pulling the string through underneath. Then last, we got purple and then silver. So the colors are the same as regular set of the Adario. It's just the string gauges are heavier. These go 62 down to 13. So the what would normally be the high E string, in this case, the high B string is a 13. Wow, that's pretty crazy. This is gonna be nuts. And finally, here's my 13. String winder time. Fun. One of the things I like to do on the headstock here is I like to line up the holes on the tuning machine so they're they're all like ready to go. Get them all set so they're ready to go and I don't have to mess around with them. I can just put the string through and just start winding. How many winds around the post do I want to do? I don't know. It's a good question. I think I think I'll put it through. So I think I'll do my normal thing, which is go one peg past and then another half. And uh, so I'll measure it. Let me show you, right? Here's one past and then about another half. I'll take that up to the post and bend the string like in an L at that point in time. Then I'll just kind of start to wind it, that, pull on it, too low. Well, let me put all the strings on before I bother adjusting anything. Now, normally I'd be clipping these, but since this is like an unknown commodity to me, I'm not going to clip these yet in case I have to rewind them for some reason. If I have to take them off, put them back on, I don't have another set of baritone strings. So uh, I think I'm just going to leave that there. So put the string through about one and a half, make an L, windy, windy. When you do this, you have to be really careful with your eyes. It would make compelling YouTube video, though. I'm sure if I put an eye out with a string, it'd probably go viral. It's not really how I want to go viral. Idiot puts eye out with string. Watch. Okay, so now what I really need to do is bring these guys up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adjusting these tail pieces so that they're high enough that the string can clear the, the highest fret here, the 22nd fret. That's what I'm doing. I'm just going to raise all these up and I'm not concerned so much with action right now. I just, none of this is fine tuning. I don't care about perfect action intonation. I mean, right now, I just want to make sure that everything is kind of making sense, that the saddles are high enough, the strings can clear the frets and I can get a little bit of an idea for what remains to be done on this instrument. Normally you would not want to do this under string tension, but this, this is not full. As you can hear, these, these are not tuned up to pitch right now. Kind of high, but the rest of them are, st are still pretty slack, so it's okay to do this. When you are adjusting bridge saddles, they should be flat parallel with the body. So you don't want them angled one way or another. Even though it seems like that might be a good idea, it's not a good idea. They need to be flat. So the two, the two legs need to be the exact same length. I got these two pickups on right now. So let's look at the nut. So my goal was to make sure I don't cut the slot too deep. Okay. So now that we're on nut cam, see, you can see how high the string is off the, uh, off the fretboard here, right? So here's the first fret. Here's the second fret. I'm going to press down on the third fret, just like that. Okay, now the distance between the bottom of this string and the top of this fret should be very, very 
very small. Uh, small in terms of like, maybe like a playing card or two. And as you can clearly see, there is quite a bit of distance there. So this slot needs to come down to the point where this is almost touching the metal, like about like there. That's about what I would want, just a little bit off the metal, like there instead of there. So the other strings are a heck of a lot closer. This is the farthest off. So I can see that I've got more work to do. So what I'll do is I'll detune this string and then I'll use my, uh, my nut slotting file and I'll cut it and then I'll retune it back up and just get it really, really close there. And I'm gonna do that with all of these. And then when I'm done, my nut will be correct. Okay, so when setting action on a baritone guitar, I've got my Baroque string action ruler. So my recommendation if you get a baritone neck is maybe set the action similar to what you would do on an acoustic. So low action on an acoustic would be like 79 thousandths for the low E string at the 12th fret, right? And then that would be more like 60 thousandths on the high E string. That is pretty much what I've done. I got 70 here and I got a little over 60 down here. That looks good. Okay, so I've got my action set. Now it's time for intonation. So if I can get out of the way here so you can at least see the colors. We want to be lit up green in the center here, basically. And you'll find too, like with the low notes, the, the lower strings, the tuner really struggles with it. So one thing you can do is 12th fret harmonic. The tuner has a little bit of an easier time with that. So, okay. So what I want to do is I want my 12th fret harmonic to be the exact same note as my fretted 12th fret. So hold putting my finger down. So about in tune. So right now, this is sharp. That's going to be a bit of a problem because if it's sharp, that means I need to increase the distance, right? I don't know if you can see, but I'm all the way back against the back of the bridge right now. I can't go any further back. So there's no improvement I can do there. Now I could probably order some saddles that aren't quite so long, and that's probably what I'm going to need to do. I mean, it's close, but I really want it to be dead on. If you're adjusting intonation though, and this happens where you need to increase the distance from here to here to make the note lower and you can't do it, then you can't do it. It doesn't mean you can't play the instrument, but it does probably mean you should order some new saddles. In my case, I may have some somewhere out in the garage. I'll have to look. Well, let's at least rough in the, uh, the other saddles and see if it's a similar issue. So this string's actually pretty good. Next. Pretty good. It's actually a little flat. So in this case, if it's flat, right, that means I need to increase the pitch, which means I need to decrease this distance. So I need to take this thing and move it further this way. Third thickest. So there's screws in the back of these saddles. By turning the screw, you can move the saddle this way or this way. So in this case, I'm going to want to turn it to the left. It takes a lot of patience to work on guitars. If you don't have a lot of patience, don't work on guitars. Pay somebody else to do it. All right, so it's about right. Yeah, it's really close. The thing is I can make a sharper flat depending on how hard I'm pressing on the 12th fret. So we'll call it close enough. <laughs>
This has been a really fun experiment. I think there's a lot of sonic possibility in this thing that I want to explore. I'm very happy with it. It went about how I thought it would go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you again next Friday at 5.